Hello again. And welcome back by from Alessandro. And um, Abe. So in this episode, we thought we would give a small introdu- quick small introduction uh, to GLSL. Last time we saw um, Shade Style, mm-hmm. which is basically used at its core, the possibility to uh, introduce inline shaders. But now we want to concentrate more to you know talk a bit about GLSL mm-hmm. and, um, and yeah. So we can go to the code. Prob- I mean, we can. Uh, w- that's how we ended up last time, and we were basically using the shade style to colorize. Let's mm-hmm. use this term uh, a circle. Okay, yeah. and we were running a little uh, code in this fragment transform um, variable. Okay, mm-hmm. but now what we can do, and it's what you usually experience when you go and look for introduction to GLSL, we we can colorize the whole canvas. Yeah. Okay. So what do we do? Uh, we can just draw a rectangle uh, mm-hmm. covering the all the bounds. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, and I'm gonna remove the border. Yeah. No. Le- you can do draw drawer stroke equal null. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, super. So at this moment, in the back, there is a rectangle. And now everything that we do, will do from this moment on will only be about pixels. Mm-hmm. Because that's what, or fragment, I will use fragment and pixel like in the same way, even if they are not. Because that's essentially what GLSL does. Mm-hmm. So basically, GLSL is um, a program, is a, a language, okay, that controls a little program that is run for each uh, pixel mm-hmm. at the same time. Also, for vertices, but we're not going to look into that. We, do, we are not going to look for vertices. Yeah. We are only going to look yeah. for what is called the fragment yeah. shader. So this is the fragment pass is actually the second. First goes the vertices, and it mm-hmm. decides where to put things on the screen. Yeah. But in our world, we have put things covering the whole screen. Exactly. So basically, the only geometry is uh, contained in this rectangle, and we are not touching that. Yeah. Okay. And but now, yeah, for every pixel in this rectangle, yeah, this program yeah. runs. So the important thing to, uh, I think it's one of the most important. Uh, it's almost like you know the Matrix scene when there is no spoon. <laughs> like you know when have you seen Matrix? Yeah. When there is uh, Neo meeting the the young kid uh-huh. and the spoon is bending. Yeah. And then there there actually is a change of perspective <laughs> that is so mind blowing <laughs> that. You know, is uh, I just say not up, almost upsetting yeah. is the fact that all of these uh, um, um, programs run for each pixel, but at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is something that is addressed as parallel computing in general, mm-hmm. which is very very cool because it means that each of these programs doesn't have to wait for the other one to finish in principle. Yeah. But it has also, you know, the great responsibility that come from great powers. And it's the fact that these programs cannot communicate with each other. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So for each pixel, you can only write that pixel and you will only have control over that pixel that you're going to output. And then you may wonder, like, how can I draw different things on different pixels? How can you draw different things on different pixels? In some way, we have to pass, or the framework will pass for us some kind of uniform, some kind of variables that, mm-hmm. so they, each pixel will have like a different mm-hmm. address. So mm-hmm. every pixel knows, oh, I'm here. X, I'm, I'm here at X, Y yeah, coordinates. Yeah. Okay, very good. And yeah, then, a way to explain that, like, if you think of drawing a circle, we can imagine two completely different ways of drawing a circle. Mm-hmm. Uh, the traditional way, uh, you would maybe draw tiny segments and uh, like little points and mm-hmm. going around, and then eventually that becomes a circle. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like moving a pencil. Mm-hmm. Uh, in this approach, in the shader world, you tell every pixel, uh, you send the same recipe. Mm-hmm. Like, basically, you you could say, if you're s- closer to the center of the screen than, for example, 200 units, mm-hmm. then Be you're white. Yeah, you're white, otherwise you're pink. Mm-hmm. Um, but everyone receives the same recipe, the same mm-hmm. program. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Exactly. And so basically, it's, uh, it's a way of drawing things which are rule-based in the sense of like, they have to have the, the rules have to be uh, done in a certain way where the pixel only knowing 
where it is, mm -hmm. only on which pixel you are talking about, the pixel can decide yeah. if they uh, can decide about the color that they have to produce. They cannot talk with any other pixel. Mm. That's the idea. And if if this is the first time you hear about this, yeah. you say you may be thinking, what an insane way of drawing! Or yeah. Why are you making so convoluted? Exactly. But and very lonely also <laughs> because this each pi pixel is on their own. Yeah. They cannot talk to anybody. Else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing is, this is actually very efficient for certain things. Mm -hmm. For example, for drawing gradients, which is a very... Exactly. And it's exactly because all of these little programs, they run on GPUs mm -hmm. in a parallel way, so yeah. at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you don't have the curse of uh, linear time of operations because you can split and parallelize them. Yeah. Okay? If you think of the example we just gave about a circle, drawing a circle... Um, if you're tracing a circle with a pen and a paper, mm -hmm. uh, the next step always depends on the previous mm -hmm. one. So you you are going step by step to draw a circle. Mm -hmm. You cannot like instantly draw all the parts of the circle exactly. at so once. You, so basically, if you have a clock that is ticking, you have to do n step mm. steps to uh, to draw basically the whole circle. Yeah. It's the same difference. Imagine it's the same difference as if... Uh, I don't know if this is uh, this analogy. I'm going to go for it. It's the same difference. Suppose you want to paint uh, the wall mm -hmm. and you go with a brush <laughs> and start from the top and start brushing everything mm -hmm. in, you know, orderly fashion. Mm -hmm. Or you shoot yeah. all painting to the wall. You put at an the ex same... explosive or, inside that. Exactly. <laughs> or you put an explosive and at the same time, all the painting goes to the wall. <laughs> so I think I think... The analogy is not super accurate, but <laughs> gives you the idea of what's going on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Very good. So, okay. So let's try to get these uh, coordinates. Mm -hmm. One way is, uh, of course, to use, um, th this is where the uniforms that we were talking in the episode before mm -hmm. yeah. play a role. Okay. Yeah. Because you can see we already on the screen, we have these uh, bounce position X, Y. Yeah. This is exact. These are exactly the normalized. Mm -hmm. position of the pixel yeah um in general i mean in i mean in general just for a, a, a code practice one gives a name to this and called chord st uv mm -hmm. depending so we could do the same just for clarity and define a vec2 uh so creating a hue line yeah. So, vec2 vec, vec two means a two-dimensional vector in GLSL language. Yeah. GLSL looks a little bit like C, no? Yeah, 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 it very much. It has the, the very similar thing, like structures and all these type of things, very similar to C. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, so, like, let's call it ST or cohort or, you know, as we want. And let's define C bounds position dot XY. I'll copy this. You are, you'll have to be very precise also with semicolon, otherwise you will get errors and ah. complaints. Maybe it's a good moment to before show. we finish this. Yeah. I just wanted to sh uh, show that actually this is not the whole shader. This is only the part we are editing. Exactly. And, and if we provoke an error... Mm -hmm. um, you it can will... see that it's pointing in the console. Yeah. And you can control click, and, and there this you is see the whole shader. The whole shader, okay. and the code we wrote is here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with this blah blah, which doesn't make mm -hmm. sense. But this is a good way if you want to explore what kind of uniforms are there mm -hmm. and all kind of inputs. And yes. Yeah. So basically, it's an automated way to. It's what's happening in the back end. Actually. And and also sometimes involuntarily you would write create an error, and mm -hmm. then you can find there. Mm -hmm. Where? Um, yeah. Yeah. I told you that I discovered this only after a couple of months. And at the <laughs> beginning, I was like, how am I going to debug this? Yeah. This is horrible. But now I know. And yeah. it's much easier. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go back to our uh, coordinates. And now let's let's put in place the recipe for the circle that you were mentioning mm -hmm. before. Right? So how we need the distance from the coordinate to the center. Yeah. Now, since everything is normalized here, the center is at coordinate 0 0.5, mm -hmm. 0 0.5. So we have the distance. Yeah. Now we have to impose this rule uh, uh, that if this distance is less than uh, a variable that we can call radius, mm -hmm. maybe, the color should be uh, white 
if mm -hmm. it's outside the radius, the color should be zero. Okay, so th this is exactly what I wanted to point out is that an intuitively one would do branching, mm -hmm. like one would do an if then. Yeah. If uh, D is less than blah, 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 gives one, otherwise zero. This in general works. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you, we, uh, we can run it and it should work. Um, but it's not running at the moment. So let's, so let's see. see. It is work. it because I need to... Uh, the, the dot, the uh, multiplication equal. Uh-huh. Uh, remove, remove this. Ah, yeah, it yeah. was to multiply, multiply yeah. by one or zero. Yeah. But maybe shouldn't that work still? But if we will... Ah, ah yeah. wait, the distance is massive. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, or well, uh, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, I, I think I wanted to, I, I wanted to go in another uh, direction, but now the, you, you are giving me, you know, how to say, the reason to make you notice something mm. that the ratio, yeah, is wrong. It's because our window is not square. Exactly. How do we solve this hmm. outside without passing an external parameter? We cannot. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> you know, we need now a meta information uh -huh. which tells what what is the uh, how to say the real dimension of this canvas. Mm -hmm. So what we can do, we can pass the resolution as a parameter. Yeah. But then we will stop using the yeah, normalized. We we can stop using the normal, or, or we just use the resolution as a to get the aspect ratio. We can also use the resolution just to get the aspect ratio. Yeah. Ratio. Yeah. Uh, but the point the point that I want to say is that we cannot solve this problem yeah, yeah. without knowledge of the external world. Yeah. Okay. Which is usually philosophically what happens when you use normalized quantities. You lose. Mm -hmm. You know, you a normalized quantity is a ratio. Yeah. So you lose information of mm -hmm. the scale of things. The, the scale exactly. Yeah. So be careful when you normalize. Yeah. So let's pass a vector two called uh, with uh, width and height. Vector two. Uh, import this. And then width. But they should be doubles. Yes. Exactly. Remember that this is a parameter, so it will uh, want a P res. Mm -hmm. So should I calculate here the yeah. aspect ratio? Yes. Aspect ratio is P res uh, x divided by y, or the other way around? I never, I never remember. So <laughs> I start with, I start with one, uh -huh. and then, and then change. I think it should be yeah. this because I always use the opposite. <laughs> yeah, I think it depends also on which is the long. Yeah. I well, whatever. So this aspect ratio is now a coefficient. Yeah. That you will need to multiply the only one of the coordinate, which yeah. I think is the x. So we can try. Yeah. Coordinate. X time equals a r. Yeah. Uh, or, oh wait, what did I write? Times equal. No. So no. it made it worse. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. But now, why is it not at the center? Who? Who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because zero five dot zero five, we mm -hmm. should also use the aspect ratio yeah. for this. Yeah. So I think if you multiply the y coordinate by the aspect ratio, no, yeah. this should work. Boom. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All this to make a yellow circle. All this to make a yellow circle. But, okay, so we have introduced now some, I mean, jokingly, we have introduced something that can take time when mm -hmm. you debug. Mm. And it's the fact that, yeah, you have to be careful of the aspect ratio. Yeah. Uh, and that that's one way of taking care of mm. that. The other thing I wanted to, uh, I, was talk, I was going to talk about before of the aspect ratio is that this is a branching. Okay, so basically in the back, and yeah. if then is happening. Yeah. This works. You are mm -hmm. seeing a circle, a yellow circle, yeah. uh, very nice. But branching by anybody that uses GLSL is not considered best practice. Mm -hmm. Because when you branch, like the, the sort of the, like the, the machine has to go forward and literally branch it. Mm -hmm. If you do this for each pixel, mm -hmm. there is a lot of branching going on. Yeah. Okay. That's why in GLSL there are tricks 
like when instead the, you can substitute branching by functions mm -hmm. like step functions mm -hmm. and there is a function called step yeah that basically it's a function that will assume the value if a uh, value one if the um, the i would say the the variable yeah is less than a, a parameter and I never remember the order. <laughs> me neither. Me neither. Now we will know. Oh, it seems to go right. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. Exactly. Yeah. So what is happening here? When you call step, it's checking this variable. It compares the two. Mm -hmm. So if it's below, then mm -hmm. it gives zero. If it's above, it gives one. Exactly. But the good thing about this is that this is not branching. Mm -hmm. This is the value of a, a function. Yeah. It doesn't have to wait for a condition to assert itself. Mm -hmm. Once you pass zero, three, this is a function of D. Yeah. So it knows exactly which value to give. Mm -hmm. Once you associate the, this yeah. might sound very minor, but I mean, mm. for performance issue at certain point becomes crucial. Yeah. And it's also important when, because when you will look at other people code, mm -hmm. you will see that a lot of them, they will use this step mm -hmm. thing. And at the beginning, you don't understand, say, why can I not do anything, everything with if then? Yeah. But, but st until now, as you said, we had just, you know, these uh, lousy circle. Mm -hmm. One thing we can do, and now it becomes interesting, instead of just considering step, we can multiply by the distance. Uh huh. Uh, the D, what do we multiply by the distance? Uh, uh, D, like D times step. D times. Because, you know, step is something like binary, one, yes. Uh huh. Okay. So basically, this is in, uh, you can Im you can that's how I think of it. I think of of the step function as a masking, mm -hmm. you know, as the mask layers uh, in GIMP. Yeah. And then the multiplying here, it's basically how to say one of these multiply um, effects. Yeah. effects exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in, in this way, if we multiply by d, mm -hmm. we are making this color depend on the distance. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm thinking of another thing to try. Uh, right. Maybe using fract. Yes. Well, I'm multiplying this by ten. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. And now, since we are here, maybe we have to explain what we did. <laughs> maybe we have to explain what we did. Okay. So basically, fract extracts the fractional part of uh, a float number. Yeah. What is the extractional part? Fractional part. Everything after the dot or yeah. the comma. Uh, if you have 7.4, then you get 0.4. Exactly, you get 0.4. So mm -hmm. basically, fract will always be a quantity between 0 and, uh, and 1. And, one. Um, and this is a way to create a, a, rep a pattern and repetition. Yeah. For instance, I think that probably you, you would have seen already that we can implement very easily here. We can pass the time. Yeah, let's add the time. Let's add the time. Uh, effect of parameter time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be seconds. Mm -hmm. And now, where should we throw in? Maybe Inside plus here. here. Yeah. P time. And we have an animated effect. Nice. <laughs> Super nice. Yeah. Uh, what happens if now we multiply by t? We can introduce the dependency on the distance, but in, in a strange way now, right? Yes. Yeah. Like not in a strange way. Basically, everything that points to the center will be darker. Or the other way around, exactly. We are basically creating uh, a, a light which diffuses yeah. on uh, on, mm -hmm. uh, on like the back. Vignetting effect. Say it again. Vignetting in cameras. Ah, right, right, yeah. right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And now we could also do something else because the step function, as I was mentioning before, is a binary function. Mm -hmm. So it's a toggle. Yeah. It, it either gets the value 0 mm -hmm. or get, gets the value 1. Mm -hmm. But in GLSL, and maybe we can point to the page, that uh, the one with the, the other one says, yes. And here you, you can see a lot of, uh, how to say, it's not a complete documentation for uh, no. GLSL, but it includes a lot of uh, nice information. We could use smooth step. Yeah. So smooth step is basically an, an interpolated version of step, mm -hmm. where instead of only having zero and one, we, we can have everything between zero and one. Yeah. And so it means that you will see the effect. Well, then, then we have to change the order of the argument, right? Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. That's, that's a bit strange decision of on the API. Yes, <laughs> yes. 
So we have to make the minimum and maximum, the range, basically, what is going to... You see? I mean, I, I don't know if I'll it's... make it more extreme. Yeah, make it more extreme, yeah. And now you can see that inside it gets very, very close to 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 the to dark, basically. Yeah, yeah. Okay? And do you you often use also this trick of using two times smooth step, the one subtracting from the other. So then you can have bo both borders Exactly, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That's also very nice. Actually, uh, along this uh, line, maybe we can introduce uh, the mix function, mm -hmm. how to mix between different colors. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Um, wait, the thing we are using now here, this is a, basically a brightness. Exactly. So I'm going to call it brief or brightness. Mm -hmm. Uh Indeed, for instance, if you remove the multiplication here, let's show that you get the same thing but white. Uh, Do we? Or did we break something? Bry with the with the Y. Ah, also no, it's because it's a vec three. Ah, it's a vec three, but it's also misspelled. Bry with the Y. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Bry, weird. Uh, uh, still not going. Uh, uh, semicolon at semicolon the end. Semicolon at the end. Yes. Okay. Okay. So you can see, and I, I I could say that this is a thing that I use a lot. I have black and white uh, somehow masks mm -hmm. going around, and then I colorize mm -hmm. later. Yeah. For instance, we can we could use this brightness. Yes. To mix through to different mix, colors. Ex exactly. To mix through different colors. Like three, and brightness. Yeah. Uh, so we decide here. One, one, zero, for mm -hmm. example, and here, zero, one, one. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe not the most <laughs> Yeah, pleasant. maybe not the most. Uh, uh, I'm going to make one of the colors dark. Yeah. So maybe it makes more sense. Yeah, nice. And now you can start playing with uh, how this brightness works. For instance, you, you can make a brightness change with power you can take mm -hmm. the square root of brightness mm -hmm. you can apply any function yeah. that uh, will go from zero to one mm -hmm. like for instance like the power and you can see that the the, the effect changes a lot mm -hmm. and this is very very nice to somehow i mean it's nice to experiment yeah that's with nice this. glow <laughs> nice gradient yeah that it's a it's a very nice gradient actually yeah. Um, and actually, if you subtract, for instance, p time, you uh, should move the other way, right? Ah, yeah. So you want to change the exactly. direction of the movement. Exactly. And I wanted to do what I mentioned with, uh -huh. this is very common, to have two times smooth step, like the same mm -hmm. function, but mm -hmm. but maybe, for example, uh, here, 0, 4, 0, 5, mm -hmm. and then 0, 7, 0, 8. Oh, uh, funny. Mm. So it's not what I expected. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Why? But Four, it is, five, yeah. seven, eight. Why are we getting black? I think maybe the second value is larger than the first one. Yeah, it could be. Yes, it anyway, could be. Anyway, we can, yeah. Yeah. You can, in the book of shaders, it's a great thing to... Exactly, see of because effects. now we have showed just how to draw a circle, mm. but you can draw segments, you can draw triangles in principle yeah. by using the same idea of defining the distance. Mm -hmm. Okay? So telling the pixel if they should be white or black at that point. Mm -hmm. So now we want to show also how to do something else and it's uh, how to because until now we have shown i mean like uh, how to uh, hand color the pixel mm -hmm. at the given position but how about can we pass something like an image right and uh, a texture basically and how do we extract the color from a texture yeah. and uh, draw the texture let's do that on the next video let's do that on the next video <laughs> and see you there <laughs> see you. bye bye bye